YouTubers! Today I'm showing you how to make the much-loved Necessary Clutch Wallet, or NCW for short. You can find the link to purchase this pattern in the description below. The one I'm making in today's video I donated to Monarch Joint Venture for their online auction to help raise money for Monarch Habitat. The link for that is below too in case you want to check it out, because in addition to this wallet there's some really cool stuff. Okay, so I've pre-cut and interfaced all the pieces already. I'm not giving any measurements because you need to purchase the pattern for that. Let's start with the flap first. I'm using a snap closure for this, so I'm folding the piece that will be the inside of the flap in half to find the center, and then measuring in from the edge one inch, and marking on the crease. Then take a washer and center it on the dot you made, and mark the two holes to either side. Take something really sharp and cut tiny slits where those lines you just drew are. Remember, you can always make the holes bigger, not so easy to make it smaller. Push the prongs of the male side of the snap through the holes on the right side of the fabric. Put the washer on the back and fold the prongs down. I folded them out because it will be less bulky, but either way will work. Place the two flat pieces right sides together and sew around the edges with a quarter inch seam allowance. Leave the straight edge open. Take your time around the curves. Trim down the seam allowance to about an eighth of an inch and flip right side out. I wanted the flap to have more structure, so I traced it onto some Decoville 526 and cut it out so it was just a tiny bit smaller than the flap. Find the center of the flap by folding it in half and make a small snip to center it on the body of the wallet later. Stuff the Decoville into the flap. Make sure you push it into the corners, and if it's curved from being on a roll, make sure that's going the same way the wallet will lay when closed, so the curve will be towards the inside fabric with the snap. Top stitch an eighth of an inch around the edges except for the straight part, and watch out for the snap, it gets really close to the needle. Find the center of the body panel by folding it in half, and measure in two and a half inches, and mark a dot. Again, place a washer down and mark the slots on either side and cut tiny snips. Push the prongs of the female piece through the right side of the fabric, put the washer on and fold the prongs flat. Find the center of the opposite side and match that up with the snip you made in the flap. Make sure the two outside panels are right sides together and both snap pieces should be up. Base that in place by stitching really close to the edge. I folded everything up to make sure it was lining up correctly. Take the inside body panel and fold it in half both ways to find the center, then mark a 3 inch line along the crease. Cut along that line because we're going to turn the wallet right side out through that opening later. Place the two body pieces right sides together and stitch around the whole thing with a quarter inch seam allowance using a longer stitch length. This sort of looked like the underside of a stingray, don't you think? Anyway, trim down the seam allowance to about an eighth of an inch. This will help it lay flat. Flip it right side out and press out all the edges. Top stitch around the body using an eighth inch seam allowance. I made sure to use a coordinating thread. 
Now work on the guts of the Stingray, I mean wallet. I doubled the width for the card slots because it's a little faster to make it this way. Then accordion fold the entire thing on the lines you marked according to the pattern. Top stitch along each right side folded edge. You'll have to flip the excess fabric out of the way. Baste the sides close to the edge to hold all the folds in place. Find the center and sew an eighth inch on either side of the line. Remember to only do this step if you doubled the width for the card slots. Then cut down the center line and voila, you have both card slot pieces. Flip it around so the slots are facing out and fold it right sides together and stitch along the bottom. Open that up and then press the seam open. Mark a line down the center and stitch. You can wipe off the chalk with a wet paper towel. Take the back panel for the card slots and lay it right sides together with what you just sewed. This should all be the same size. Stitch along the top and the bottom. Flip that right side out, press it flat and top stitch the top and the bottom. Now trim the zipper down to size. Do not cut off the zipper pull. Take the small rectangles that are the zipper tabs and place them right sides together with each end of the zipper in the middle and stitch that in place. This is a little tricky because it's so small. Fold out the zipper tabs and top stitch. Place a lining piece face up, then the zipper face up, and the outside pocket piece face down. Switch to a zipper foot and stitch that in place. Fold that open and top stitch along the edge. Now take the other lining piece right side up, put the zipper panel right side up, and the second outer pocket piece right side down and stitch that in place. Once again, fold that open and top stitch in place. Open this up and place the pieces right sides together, making sure the edges line up. Oh, and don't forget to open the zipper. Stitch around the three open edges. Trim down the seam allowance to an eighth of an inch and flip it right side out.
Make sure to poke out all the corners. Top stitch along those three edges. This will hide the raw edges inside the zipper pocket. Fold this in half to find the center and mark. Then mark half an inch lines on either side of that line, as well as half an inch marks in from the edge to create a rectangle. Center that on the card slots and stitch around the rectangle. You can see there are no raw edges inside. Center the card slots onto the main body and fold the zipper panels out of the way. Then fold in either side of the body. Stitch along the sides with a quarter inch seam allowance. I tested it out again to make sure it was laying correctly. Again, I'm using a longer stitch because I'm using cork. Tug on the sides to make sure you cut the edges of the card slots and you can't see the basting stitches. I don't like how the hole is showing at the bottom. It technically shouldn't matter when it's done because it will be hidden, but I didn't like knowing that it was there, so I went back and stitched over that rectangle again. I eyeballed putting the zipper panel in place and made sure it looked even. Just keep adjusting it until it looks right. There are marks on the pattern, but I've found it's easier to just eyeball it. And check how it closes, again. Then I used a leather hole punch to punch holes for the rivets, which is a bit nerve wracking because if you place them wrong, you will mess the whole thing up. Then I used my handy dandy new rivet press and set them all in place, and you are done. This wallet is now available on the Monarch Joint Venture auction page, which is listed below.